Hello everyone, this is student Dave again, and here we're going to be doing a supplementary tutorial on image processing. Image processing. Specifically, um, processing for tracking a little hex bug that's moving around that we're going to then apply um, in our tutorial on the two-dimensional common filter. But specifically, in this tutorial, we're going to use basic image processing tools to track the hex bug. There he is, there's a hex bug. And um, the hex bug is going to be moving all over the place. He's going to be running around, running around. There he is. He's going to be moving all over the place. And our goal will be to track the hex bug in this image using some very basic image processing tools. And then um, after we got that tracking, after we track this hex bug moving all over the place, we're then going to apply the two dimensional column filter to improve the estimate. But just in this tutorial, it'll just be all about the basics of image processing. So, what is image processing? Well, image processing is basically a collection of algorithms and tools for extracting out objects or features from, a, from an image. And so our question is then, well, what is an image? Well, let's take our hex bug here, and let's put him in an image. Now, that's our picture. The hex bug's in the middle of it. And so what, what is that really? Well, an image is a collection of points in a matrix format. That is, here let me just draw some matrices. That is, it's basically an, Im an image is a bunch of values arranged with each other in a 2x2, two two, in this case, 2x2 two two coordinate space. Just give it some values. Say maybe this is the, the hex bug. The hex, the hex bug's dark, but let's just give it positive values. Maybe that's a 4. And then give these 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And so that's all an image is. An image is just a collection of points given x and y coordinates. And so every point has some relation with points nearby it, and they all have different values. Now, the whole goal of image processing tools is to find features, to find particular aspects of objects that we are interested in. Like in this case, our hex bug has kind of darker values, so these are larger values here. And find ways for extracting out these features so that we can then e extract out the objects of interest. So it's all about unique features, unique features. So in our case, in this simpler case, the hex bug is very distinct from the background. We could merely just threshold and say any value greater than 1 is our hex bug, and so we'd get this blob structure in the middle that represents our hex bug. Now, sometimes this isn't that easy. In fact, usually it's not this easy. Like, say we were looking for in this entire image the Bayesian ninja. Now, if we just did a took one feature that the Bayesian ninja is black, said, okay, well, let's extract everything that's black, well, we're going to end up with a lot more than just the Bayesian Ninja. Sure, we'll avoid all this white space here, a large percentage of the image, but we'll also extract out the quail, these words, and all these lines. And we say, okay, well, maybe that's not a good feature. It's a feature, nonetheless, but it's not a unique feature to the Bayesian Ninja. And you're like, well, what is unique? Well, the Bayesian Ninja has a, a round head, so and it's got a line through it, and it's got these two things coming off it. So maybe we could say anything that has that, and is continuous, we'll call all that Ninja. Now, maybe the quail might get some of that, or maybe this letter E over here will get that, but most things in this uh, image would not have that as a unique feature, as a feature, so it won't be a unique feature, and we're more likely to extract out the Bayesian Ninja. And that's the whole point. That's the whole idea behind uh, image processing, is to extract out unique features, have tools for doing that, develop algorithms for extracting out those features, so that you can then pull out the particular uh, object of interest. Here I'm going to go over some very basic tools for getting these unique features in a case where there's a very sal salient uh, object, in this case the hex bug. So before doing any of the uh, processing tools, uh, let's watch the video real quick of the little recording I did so you can see what we're really looking at, what we're trying to get out of it, what, what the what image quality looks like and whatnot, and then I'll show you how to extract out each of these features. <laughs> okay, okay, so there you go. There's the video. Okay, so you just saw the video um, where the little hex bug is moving all over the place, running around, doing a couple loops. And so the very first thing we can do is what's called a background subtraction. In the very beginning of the video, there's all several frames, just like this, where there's nothing in it. There's no arm, there's no hex bug, there's nothing. It's just this background image. Because the camera doesn't move, 
And because these uh, features are pretty constant, nothing changes too much, we can then subtract this away from every image later on where there is a hex bug so that we can extract out everything that is hex bug and get rid of everything that's been static in the image over time, which is all these different attributes, the dark, the light, and the words, and stuff like that. Now what we could simply do is just take a single image from the background, background frames, early frames, and just subtract it away. But what happens if this particular image had a lot of light in it, maybe long, it's like lit up more here on the edge, or maybe somebody walked past and there was a shadow, or maybe it's just, you know, there's, the camera's not very good and there's a lot of like speckles. A good way to deal with this is to, de is to take a series of images, like take like 20 of these first images, and then take the average of them. So what that means is that at every pixel, like a pixel here, that's a large pixel. Basically, at every pixel across the frames, get the value. So maybe it was like 1, 1.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 3, 1, negative 1, I don't know. Maybe not negative 1. And get those values for every single uh, frame, all 20 frames, the initial frames where there's all just only just background, and then get the average value across those. That will basically avoid any weird anomalies, like maybe this frame is 3 because it was like a little bit brighter, it was like on one of the cycles of the light or something like that. And it allows us to avoid any of those little noisy nuances uh, by creating a smooth average template, which looks like this. And so as you can see, this average template, um, you can see the lines pretty distinct here. Um, these are all kind of smoothed out. You don't see them as much anymore. It's kind of blurred. And so the idea is basically you take in all, a whole set of background images and smooth them over each other by taking the average so that we're not uh, affected by any weird noise from a single frame that might have messed everything up. And this is a cleaner way to create an average template to subtract away from when you're doing the image processing. So here's uh, one of the later raw image frames where there is a hex bug in the frame. So here's a raw image. And let's see what happens when we take this raw image. I put it in false coloring so we can kind of see it more distinctly and it kind of looks cooler. So let's see what happens when we subtract away the background image from this raw image. And bam, there we go. And so as you can see, all the background is gone. Everything that was in this averaged background template, these lines, this red, this uh, edge border, the, the picture, everything's gone. Uh, there's still a little bit of noise in it. You can see some noise here and a little bit of silhouette of the Beijing Ninja and some of the edge a little bit here. It might be a little hard to see on your computer. But basically what this did is a very good job of removing everything that was not the hex bug, which is uh, called background subtraction. And it's a very useful tool when you have a camera that's not moving. And so here we have our background subtracted image, right? And it's pretty good, but I wouldn't say it's perfect. Like here we got a, a point here that's kind of uh, got a... Got a, a didn't get we didn't get rid of and it looks like maybe I moved so my shadows kind of in there and we still kind of see remnants of the the Bayesian ninja and stuff like that and so what we're gonna do to clean this up a little bit better is apply a filter function a masking filter function pixel by pixel over this image to clean it up or do whatever function you want to it but here we're gonna clean it up and what we're gonna use is a Gaussian filter function it looks like this now all a Gaussian filter function is, is a collection of points. Uh, it's like a template. Here it's a 20 by 20 template, and the center value is like 1, and then these other values are like 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, going down to like 0 0.0, 0 0.1. And what we're going to do is apply this pixel by pixel to the image, and basically create a new image out of this after we filtered it with this mask. And let me show you exactly what I mean by filtering. Say we have this example image. It looks like this. And what I want to do is I'm going to apply a smaller filter function to it. Instead of a 20 by 20, I'm going to do a 3 by 3 like this. So here, this is an example. It's not as big as this larger Gaussian one, but it gets the idea across. It's kind of in the center we have these large values, and on the perimeter we have these smaller values. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to apply this, this, uh, this filter function to every pixel point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and I'm going to put it over every point. So say we're starting at this point right here in the middle where the point 0.9 is at. What we're going to do is we're going to put this here and we're going to reassign, create a new value for this point here in the middle by combining this filter with this image along these nine pixel values right here. And so there's a number of ways to do that. There's a number of ways to compute on this, but a, a standard way is to basically take the, the uh, weighted average. So the first coordinate would be 1 times 0.2 plus 1 times 0.7 plus 1 times 0 0.2 
etc., 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 and then divide all that by 9. So that'd be for this point, then this point, then this point, and so on and so forth. And then after we compute all that and get the average, the weighted average value, we'll reassign that to this point here. And then what we'll do is we'll take this and we'll move it over to the next one, and then to the next one, and then the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And basically you move this, you convolve it. So that's a word. <laughs> that's a mathematical word. We're convolving this filter over the image to create a new image with these new values assigned at each pixel point as we move it across. And so in this case, what we're using is we're going to apply this filter function to this image. And what do we get? We get this nicely smoothed image. Now we can see that this little pixel value got basically obliterated because it was just very transient. This filter function is big enough where it would just kind of roll over that as it moved across and just flatten, basically really reduce that value because a lot of points around it are a lot less, even though it's highly weighted in the middle, there's so much less that it just kind of gets flattened out. Whereas a lot of the points around each of these points, because they're a cluster, kind of help each other, and so they don't flatten each other out completely, and all you get is a little bit of bleeding, but the overall centering of it, it stays the same, and we get rid of everything else, includes the little edges that the Bayesian ninja are at, and this, I mean, while this is still kind of here, it bled it out a little bit. And so, this is a good way for clearing up an image with, say, that has a lot of speckles or white noise in the image. This Gaussian filter function is very good. Now, there are other functions. There's one called the, I think, the Slobel function, the Slobel function, excuse me, and that can be used for finding horizontal and vertical lines and whatnot. And there's a whole bunch of different types of filter functions. This one is particularly good when you're trying to get rid of noisy uh, aspects to your image, as what we've done here. Okay, so what we have here is our Gaussian filter image. We have a bunch of values of 10, and then these are all like values of 1 and 5. So we did a pretty good filtering, and so you can say, yes, we're done, woohoo! Uh, no, we're not done. All we do is clean up the image. We still don't know where the bug is, right? So what we have to do is threshold the image and maybe find the center of mass of this bug. So how do we do that? Well, there's a lot of ways to threshold. I mean, you could just kind of eyeball it and go, well, these values are all kind of high, maybe they're around 10, so let's just take anything below 10. But there's a little bit more rigorous formal way to do it, and that's called um, using a histogram to uh, histogram-based thresholding. So if, for those of you who don't remember what a histogram is, let me show you. A histogram is basically going to be a count of the number of times we see a particular point a particular value. So say all these values around here are values kind of around 10. Well, on our histogram of 0 to 10, that means that we're going to see a lot of points around 10. This is the count. And then we're going to see suddenly a lot less points that have lower values, and very few of them are going to have values less than 10. And that'll be values that are around here. And so what we can then do is we can go, well, we can just threshold this. Let's take every value above this, some line maybe around like, let's say that's 7, and get rid of those. And every value below that will keep. So using the histogram, we can get a little bit more rigorous way of thresholding. And if we apply that to what we've done here, what we get is, is this, shazam. <laughs> uh, so what this is, is all the blue is a value zero, that's all these things. And then the green is all the values of one that pass threshold or below the value set by this bar from the histogram. Now then what I did in MATLAB is I found the center of mass of these values of one and basically kind of put a diamond over that, and I'll show you how I do that in MATLAB. And that allows us to get an x and y coordinate for the, for the hex bug in this frame, and then we apply it to frame by frame by frame. So, yeah, so that's how you do it in this last step. This is thresholding, and then we end up with this thresholded image of zeros and ones, and then you could do some center of mass uh, calculation to find the center of that to define the whole thing as a single coordinate. So in summary, what did we do? Well, what we had here is we got our little hex bug friend, Right, and he was like running around on the screen. He's like running all over the place. And uh, okay, stop. Um, and so he's running around the screen. And what we do is we took our raw image, and then we got an average background template, and subtracted that from the raw image to get this nicely filtered image. This is a pretty good filtering. But then it's got some noise, and so what we do is we apply a smoothing function. Basically, we convolve this image with a Gaussian filter function to smooth it out and get rid of any noise. And then we use our histogram-based uh, thresholding to find the hex bug, give them a values of 1 and zeros everywhere else, and then I use a center of mass uh, calculation to find a center of those values of 1, so we can get a single coordinate to define the position of our hex bug. And that's it. You know, I mean, this is kind of a simple example where we have a very static background, and it's a very salient object, but these are kind of useful principles for object tracking that you could extend to a lot of different uh, domains and situations. Um, and I'll show you how I do all that in MATLAB. 
and then um, go to the next tutorial where I use this tracking data to do an improved tracking when say their tracking kind of screws up and applying by applying the common filter in two dimensions. Okay, uh, remember to subscribe and see you in a minute.